Cultivating Global Sustainability. One Community Weekly Progress Update number 272. One Community is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We are creating open source and free shared blueprints and resources, tools and tutorials, and do it yourself instructions for highest good living. Creating solution models that create additional solution creating models in the service of all life on this planet. My name is Jay Sable, and I'm the executive director of the One Community 501c3 nonprofit organization. This is our weekly progress update number 272, June 10th, 2018 edition. Today, what I'd like to talk about is cultivating global sustainability, which is obviously what One Community is all about. Everything that you see happening in the background of this video and on our website, and everything we've been creating for the last seven years is focused on that goal. What a lot of people don't realize is that that's not always what One Community has been about. Originally, One Community was designed to create individual change. It really wasn't about global change. The idea was to change individuals and then hopefully that those individuals would make a difference in the world. But most importantly, we really wanted to transform the lives of individual people by giving them a place that they could come and experience what holistic living looked like. What living built on sustainable infrastructure and, and a foundation and a a goal of personal growth, development, and social interaction, what that would look like. And through the sustainable infrastructure, we had designed seven different sustainable homes. People would be able to come and stay in those homes. While they were there, they would be able to take enrichment classes. They would eat homegrown food. They would have higher quality air, water, social uh, architecture, and fulfilled living practices, all designed into the entire model. So it was a holistic way of living that people could come experience. And our belief was is that through experiencing this, like a vacation uh, destination, that we would change the way that people saw the world and pos positively and permanently transform their outlook in such a way that hopefully they would move towards wanting to live that way themselves. And through that process, we realized that if we were really going to change, if we really wanted to make huge change, through the same idea, we could change the world by open sourcing and free sharing the aspects and expanding it from just an individual community to several different community models working together as a collaborative and cooperative city eventually that would have the seven different sustainable, sustainable models that you see here and so much more. And so through that, our mission evolved into cultivating global sustainability through open source and free share tools, tutorials, resources, and do-it-yourself instructions for replicating the original model and expanding upon that to make it so much larger. And our idea is that if we can create this and we can make it easy enough, affordable enough, and demonstrate it's attractive enough that the idea will spread on its own. And the real foundations of the model are a way of living that is so much better, that most people consider to be so much better than the way they're living right now, that they won't be able to comfortably return to a traditional living model. And then providing all the open source tools and resources and blueprints and everything necessary, both in video format and website format and downloadable PDFs, which is the direction that we're moving and everything that we've been creating for the last seven years, so that people can replicate everything that it is that we're creating, either as the complete teacher demonstration community, village, city, or hub designed to teach others how to create teacher demonstration communities, villages, and cities and hubs as well, which are sustainability models designed to create additional sustainability models, teacher demonstration models designed to teach others how to teach others how to create teacher demonstration models, or to give people just what they need to, to replicate the individual components. So everything that we're creating is modular as well as uh, implementable as a complete teacher demonstration hub. And so as we build one community, and as we invite initially 50, 100 people to come out and visit, then a thousand, then tens of thousands, and eventually hundreds of thousands of people to visit annually to experience everything that it is, the life, lifestyle and all the sustainability infrastructure aspects, as well as the fulfilled living models, the highest good economic models, the highest good education models, all of that open source, free shared, available for the public to experience, to come and see what it is, so that people can take what it is that they want and implement it in whatever way that they want within their lives, or to take it because it's open source and free shared and evolve it into something even better. And so as we're building this, as we're creating this, this is our idea of cultivating global sustainability. Open source and free shared so that it's easy enough and affordable enough, and then inviting people to experience it and, and developing everything so it covers all aspects of the human experience in a way that we think most people will be better than the way they're living right now, so that we can demonstrate it as attractive enough so the idea will spread its own. And so doing that, if we can create a self-replicating model, if we can demonstrate living this way as better 
enough, better enough, good enough, then better enough than the way that people are living right now, then the idea will spread on its own. And in so doing, we can transform our planet to one that works for everybody within our lifetime. If you run the numbers on the idea of 50 people coming together and creating something like this, and that motivating and inspiring just two more communities to start the next year, and if combined, those three communities then could inspire four more the year after that, and then all those together could inspire eight more after that, and 16 more after that, and 32 and 64, then continue that doubling process, that replicating process. And this is considering only communities of 50 people. You could still touch the lives of every single person on this planet within 30 years. You could create a model where everybody who wanted to, everybody globally who wanted to participate could. And that's what we're doing. This is what our open source and free shared idea of cultivating global sustainability is all about and built on. So this is what we're up to. We're a 100% volunteer organization. We're all unpaid. We're a nonprofit organization. We're a non-governmental organization. We're creating this because we believe this world is possible. We believe we can create utopia on earth within our lifetime and that people can participate in the way that they want to. We believe we can do it and are doing it in a way that everybody who wants to participate can and those who don't, don't have to. It's not disruptive. It's regenerative. It's designed specifically to integrate in with all existing systems and to demonstrate a better way for those who want to participate, a way that fully meets the needs of everyone involved within that, within the models and shares those models so others who want to get involved as well can. And so this is meant for, for developed countries, third world countries. It's meant to become stewards of our planet ethical, conscientious stewards of the planet, working together and inviting everybody who wants to, to participate. This is what we're up to. So with that said, here is one week of our all-volunteer team's progress and accomplishments working towards this goal of cultivating global sustainability. Check it out. The one community approach to highest good housing is eco-artistic home building that is affordable, sustainable, do-it-yourself duplicable, resource and space efficient, and consists of seven different sustainably constructed village models. This week, the core team assembled the Murphy bed nightstand in 3D using the assembly instructions and created a list of suggested improvements. And the core team working with Michael Hagler, senior graphic designer and artist, also finished another round of edit requests for the Cobb Village and Recycled Materials Village and integrated Michael's completed work for the Shipping Container Village into the website. This is also all part of the Seven Villages book we're developing. In addition, Shadi Kennedy, artist and graphic designer, completed his 11th week leading the development of the Murphy Bed Instructions. This week, Shadi renumbered all the parts to make referencing them easier and updated all the related steps, the cutting plan, and parts layouts. Dean Scholes, architectural designer, continued with the Cobb Village render updates too. Here's update 117 of Dean's work, and this new render he's working on that will show a section view of one of the units. Mike Kowalski, game developer, finished his 10th week helping update our Recycled Materials Village renders that are too big for anything but a gaming computer. This week, Mike finished re-rendering the main render of the complete village, then we updated it across the entire website. And Michelle Pinzaru, interior designer and architectural drafter, completed her 16th week working on the Treehouse Village residential renders. This week, she redesigned the stair access to the loft bed and added test furniture for the upstairs hostel living area. You can see this work in progress here. One community is also creating an open source duplicable city center. It is designed to be LEED Platinum certified, provide 12 guest rooms, dining for over 150 people, and laundry and recreation space for over 300 people, all while saving money, time, space, and resources. This week, the core team started updating the bedroom renders in the duplicable city center to test the new lighting and color schemes. We updated the furniture, checked all walls, doors, and windows, and added the correct lights. The core team, working with Dipti Dondaker, electrical engineer, also continued developing the lighting specifics for the city center. This is Dipti's 80th week volunteering on this task, and the focus this week was applying everything we tested with the different lighting fixture types and layouts so we could create and add to the website this first floor final bedroom lighting distribution graphic. Hayes Lay, structural engineer, 
continued work on the city center structural engineering by creating the price estimates for the TJI beams and reviewing the joist design, some of which you can see here. Yun Lin, bridge design engineer, also completed his ninth week helping with the beam design and calculation spreadsheet creation for the city center structural engineering. This week he finished the wind load calculations for the roof. Last but not least, Du Wa Feng, civil engineer, completed his sixth week working on the fire suppression and safety systems designs for the city center. This week, he further researched horizontal sprinkler options, sensor, and other options for triggering these systems, and further developed the AutoCAD sprinkler layouts for these and the in-ceiling sprinklers. One community's approach to highest good food is duplicable almost anywhere, scalable for different needs, more biodiverse and nutritious, part of forwarding a global open-source botanical garden collaborative, and includes nine different free shared and duplicable growing environments. This week, the core team continued writing the behind-the-scenes narrative and detailed food rollout plan for the various stages of development. We researched nitrogen fixers and worm digestion and added orchard grass and hay mulch benefits with accompanying articles. In addition, we incorporated hay versus straw and the Ruth Stelt mulching methods into the plan. Next, we organized and gave a final proofread to the assorted articles for the garden establishment section on pages 7 through 13. Some of this you can see here. One community's approach to highest good education is designed for all age groups, adaptable to any schooling environment, inspiring and fun for all participants, includes national standards, all subjects, lesson plans, teaching strategies, learning strategies and tools, classroom design, and more. This week, the core team began work on the Learning for Life Transference of Knowledge resource by formatting the page, writing content, and adding graphics. We'd say we're now about 50% complete with this new page. The One Community Approach to Highest Good Society is globally focused, individually enriching, cooperative and collaborative, includes a highest good network and application, four different economic models, and combines fulfilled living and true earth stewardship for the benefit of all people and all life on this planet. This week, the Highest Good Network software team consisting of Samya Manahar, software engineer, web developer, and net application developer, Shubur Mittal, software delivery manager, and Swati Jayaseelan, software developer, continued their work on the software. This week, they added an admin reset password option, checkbox classification of users by active and inactive, made roles selectable and editable by dropdown, fixed users time log header bar, fixed team and project hyperlinks, made current week as the default selection for reports and choose a range as a pop-up, removed past week data from charts other than the current week, changed the page layout in the charts page to match the mock-up, and started working on the individual reports. There you have it. There's one week of our team's progress and accomplishments working towards the goal of cultivating global sustainability through open source tools, tutorials, resources, and do-it-yourself instructions for all aspects of what we call highest good living. If you'd like to see more details, more specifics, links to all the open source content, everything that is we're developing, visit our website, visit our written blog. Uh, if you'd like to help out, visit our helping page. There's lots of different ways to do that. The easiest of which, of course, is to uh, share our information on social media or to join our social media networks. We're on all the different social media networks to make it as easy as possible. We are on Facebook, we are on Tumblr, we are on Reddit, we are on Twitter, we are on Pinterest, we are on Instagram, all the different social media networks, about 15 others as well. So if you'd like to uh, join us there or if you'd like to support our organization in the easiest way possible, share our information. Help us get the information out. Get the information in the hands of more people that be interested in it. Help us spread the word. It makes a big difference. Or just like our posts. Just go to our pages and like all the different things. We don't just post about uh, our organization. We also post about other, other sustainability news and things like that, especially on Facebook. It's the place where we do that the most, our groups and our pages. So you can support that way if you'd like to. Of course, if you're somebody who's donated to us, that makes a big difference. We're 100% unpaid staff, so 100% of donations go to forwarding our mission. They don't go to paychecks of myself or anybody else on the team. Thank you for that. If you're somebody who's emailed us or contacted us or commented on our videos or any of our posts, thank you for that as well. All of it helps. It all makes a difference. Now, if you're just somebody who's watched the end of this video, hey, thanks for watching the end of the video. It makes a big difference. Not most people. Most people don't make it to the end, and so uh, for that, we say thank you as well. Either way, till next week, and till next week, we will, of course, keep on keeping on, and we say thanks for following our progress. Thank you.